Hey, James here from the Web Video Co. Hope your day is going well. Hey, have you ever wondered how you can create an effect just like the one you're watching now, where the person talking to the camera, in this case me, <laughs> is in focus, but the background is blurred out? You'll have seen this effect used in movies and TV programs and documentaries numerous times, and it creates a really stunning cinematic effect and also draws the viewer's attention to the person talking you know, and kind of eradicates anything going on in the background. But also, it does look really, really attractive and it's really, really easy to achieve as well. And I want to show you exactly how you can achieve it today using a Canon digital SLR camera and a little bit of time. It doesn't take long to set up once you know how. So having said all that, let's head back to the office where I want to show you the camera and give you a bit more information on how you can go about setting this up. And then after that, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to take you through how to actually set the shot up and adjust it so it looks really, really awesome. Let's go back to the office and take it from there. All right, so welcome along to the video in which we're going to be learning how to create a nice shallow depth of field or bokeh style effect. Now this is simply where I'm in focus, but the background behind me is nice and blurred out. It kind of creates a really cinematic and artistic look. You'll have seen this used in films, in TV programs, and you can do it from home or in your business really, really easily, create extremely professional looking video. Um, you'll have probably seen the introduction to this video in which we're gonna actually go outside and record that very introduction in a moment using this camera here. Now I've got a digital SLR, this is the Canon EOS 550D, also known as the Rebel T2i in the States. And this is a kind of fairly entry level uh, digital SLR, um, conventionally obviously used for taking photographs, but in recent years, the manufacturers like Canon and Nikon have started adding HD video recording capability into these cameras. Now, the first thing to, to really draw your attention to is that we've got the default lens uh, installed in the camera at the moment. This is the, the kit lens, the one that comes when you buy the camera. Now you can use this to create this effect. It does have a manual focus just by adjusting uh, the ring on the Mac here. Um, however, the aperture depth of this lens isn't really sufficient to really create that very shallow depth of field that we're getting the look that we we're after today. We're gonna have to take the lens off and switch it for a more specialist lens. All right, so the lens I'm gonna fit into the camera now is a 50 millimeter and it's 1.4. All right, now this is obviously at kind of an additional expense to actually buying the camera itself. These lenses, I'm gonna be honest, you know, aren't cheap. There are three particular models which you can go for um, to create this effect. This is the mid-range model, the 1.4. You can go for a 1.2, which is much more expensive. In fact, it's pretty much twice the cost of the camera itself. Or you can go for the cheaper model, which is quite affordable actually, which is the 1.8. All depends on how serious you are about doing this, I guess. Um, the 1.8, there's certainly nothing wrong with it. From what I've heard, I've never used one myself. Doesn't feel um, as good quality as the 1.4 or the 1.2. However, it can still achieve pretty much the same effect or very similar, get you very similar, decent results. So it's just a case of sliding the lens onto the camera. Um, obviously, we can take the lens cap off and start shooting. There is a, a focus ring on the camera. However, there is no zoom. Okay, so this lens doesn't allow you to zoom in or out as a kind of standard lens, you know, comes with the camera would. Um, so we can focus on this lens, which is really, really what we need to create this effect. The only thing to bear in mind is that sometimes you do need to a little bit of space to play with in order to you know, set the camera far enough back so you're not out of shot uh, or so you're not too close or too far away, etc., etc. So rather than obviously being able to zoom in out, you actually have to physically move the camera backwards and forwards depending on where you need it. So we've had a look at the lens and we talked about why getting a specialist lens to create this effect is probably worth the investment if you're really serious. Next thing we need to look at is the actual settings on the camera. Now, you can create this effect to some extent with your default auto mode enabled, if you like. Um, but 
really the, the beauty of it and you can have a lot more control and create some really really interesting uh, effects if you set some manual settings on here. Particularly I'm talking about the aperture which is the amount of light that actually physically gets let into the camera through the lens and the exposure as well. And there's no right and wrong settings here, I just want to point out before we get started. Um, it depends on the effect you're trying to achieve, your lighting levels, etc, etc. Um, I just want to draw your attention to actually how to activate these settings and how to use them because when I was first working out how to achieve this myself, I was kind of confused, you know, and I wasn't entirely sure. Um, I'm not a photography expert, I've only been using a digital SLR as a video camera for a short period of time. so. You know, let me just talk you through them. Basically, first of all, we need to make sure that out of all the settings, obviously we're onto our movie mode, our camera, to enable us to film. We then turn the camera on. We've got live view mode enabled, which means we can see what's going on through the actual screen rather than through the viewfinder. Um, we can, first of all, enable uh, manual mode. Let me just lock this off here by pressing the menu key scrolling to the second menu and you can see here it says movie exposure and it's currently set to auto. Now this is um, the default setting for the Canon cameras. We're going to go down, uh, press the set button on manual, so we're now on manual mode. All right. Now you can see beside menu there's a disp option that simply toggles the display. We want this bottom bar along here just to enable us to, cho uh, to change and see what we're doing a few things. First things first, this aperture uh, value button, if we hold that down and we use a wheel on the top, we can change the value of the aperture and you'll see down here this value changing as I adjust that. I can set that higher or lower depending on our requirements. I'll show you exactly how we put this into practice outside. Um, the wheel on the top I'll just quickly show you is just, just here, so this is what we're adjusting. The next thing is the exposure which is on the left hand corner and if we don't press the uh, aperture value control but we just change this button we can adjust the exposure. I can see the lower the exposure is, the brighter everything becomes, the higher it is, everything becomes a little bit darker. Alright so now you know how to adjust the aperture and the exposure for a camera, both of which are going to be important to create this effect. So it's a really nice day outside today. What I figured we'd do is head on over to a nearby park where we've got lots of greenery uh, here in Manchester at the moment. We're going to set this camera up, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that and uh, we'll take it from there. Let's go outside, bye for now. Alright so looking around here you wouldn't think that there was a uh, a secret little tranquil haven hidden away in Manchester here. Just have a spin around, have a look. This is uh, this is pretty much as inner city as you can get. But follow me, I've got a little secret. A little bit noisy here because of the construction site. But we're going to head on over to the other side of the park and I'm going to show you how to set this all up, so follow me. Well, we've picked our location. We're going to use the park behind me um, as a backdrop and I just want to, first of all, just set the camera up We've set it forward, you see these two posts we've got over here. Um, I'm going to be using them as a kind of visual reference point. And here's what I mean. Um, obviously if you, you're a cameraman, you're setting up for a subject, you don't really have this issue. But if you're ever filming yourself, which I'm going to be doing today, obviously the cameraman is here, but he is behind the other camera. Um, and you need a way to actually focus this thing so, you know, you're in shot and whatever's behind you is out of focus, you know, creating this nice shallow depth of field effect. So first of all, let's just make sure the tripod's nice and steady. We're on a little bit of a slant here, but it's not a big issue um, just for the purposes of demonstration. One thing I'm going to do is just raise this up a little bit just so it's kind of on level with my eyes. And then we can take the lens cap off, switch the camera on. And as you can see, everything is slightly blurry. I'm going to take my sunglasses off just so I can see more clearly. Um, everything's a little bit out of focus at the moment. Uh, this is obviously where we need to start playing around with our settings. So the first thing we need to do is choose uh, 
where we want the camera to be and just trying to kind of frame the picture really. Um, I want those two posts which are over there to be out of shot but I'm going to be using them and what I'm going to actually be doing is using them as a reference in that I'm going to be focusing the posts well, I'm going to be focusing the left hand side post over here so that's in focus and then when I go and film my piece I can stand on level with the post safe in the knowledge that I'm going to be in focus however if I don't have a reference point it's very very hard to guess um, how focused you're going to be uh, and believe me it's really really difficult so the best thing to do the best advice I can give you if you're filming yourself and you want yourself to be sharp and in focus is focusing on a, a reference point swivel the camera and make sure you're standing exactly in line with that reference point and fingers crossed you should be in focus so let's uh, let's set this up right away um, first thing I'm going to do actually is just zoom into our post just pressing the zoom button on the camera here and we can zoom in twice and then we can just tweak the focus ring on the front just so the post is in focus all right if we zoom back out again we can then adjust our aperture and in this case I'm going to actually put it right down to the lowest it will go which is 1.4 but as you can see in doing so I've created quite a bleached out effect and you can't really see anything even the post itself isn't very clear and definitely everything behind is just a total sort of whitey green blur so to adjust the uh, you know get rid of this effect I'm just going to adjust the exposure so everything becomes nice and not vivid but you know a, a bit more defined and green but as you can see if we zoom in everything is still nicely blurred out this is nice shallow depth of field and if we then just move the camera over to uh, our post here and just zoom in on the post again you'll see the difference between the post which is really really focused in and obviously the background which is nice and blurred out so this is our nice shallow depth of field effect we're going to be using today I then move the camera around to exactly where I want and then make sure everything on the tripod is locked off so there's going to be no kind of movement at all and we're then ready to film so all I'm going to do is press the record button so we're now recording okay and I can then go and stand on level with the post making sure that I'm pretty much lined up with it but also stood in the center of the shot and then we're in action and hopefully what you should be seeing now is a nice focused version of me with a nice blurred out background behind me and that's exactly how you create uh, in your videos a nice shallow depth of field a nice bokeh effect which you'll see in so many popular films and TV shows documentaries all that type of stuff and you can do it yourself with a simple digital SLR camera from home or in a studio looks really really great I'm really happy with the results so let's go home edit this video up and uh, hope you've enjoyed watching I'll speak to you again very soon bye for now